Hey everyone, welcome to Buzzing About Romance. I am Becky, and I am super excited to be joined for this episode by Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Becky. And Leah. Hi, Leah. Hi, Becky. Um, so for this episode, we are going to provide you with a Holiday Reads TBR. Um, and the reason I bring it up so quickly is because when I put that this would be the episode that we were recording for this, I do not think Jenny replied fast enough. She was like, me. I'm like, okay. Jenny, no offense, but you do not strike me as a person who loves Christmas. I do not at all. Like, Apparently she just loves the holiday reads, like, though. Yes, I do. Like, I, I think it, there's just like that little like magic type feel to the holidays uh, that I don't experience in real life. So it's that like <laughs> escapism. Because when you That's were fair. like, when you're like, I'm in, I'm like, does Jenny strike me as <laughs> like the holiday sweatshirt, like the Rudolph on her van, like <laughs> decorate to the nines? Like Christmas, you know what my cock- holiday sweatshirt is. Sure. What is your holiday sweatshirt? It's um a dumpster on fire, merry and bright. Nice. That's fair. I mean, chitters full. <laughs> chitters full. <laughs> um, like, do you own seventy blow ups and put them in your front yard and like a waving no. Santa? We have one Marshall from Paw Patrol. Oh, but you have a blow up. Yeah. Wow, Leah is judging hard over there. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's like, I am not putting the blow up up if that like makes a difference. It does. <laughs> it does. I mean, because we all know that I'm an absolute Scrooge. The holidays are not my favorite time of year. But you like to decorate. I love decorations. But I love to decorate for all holidays and seasons. Ask Jenny. Yeah, like yeah we have, she's not, like, discriminatory. <laughs> like, I own almost as many pride decorations for June as I do for Halloween in October. Well, I mean, and that's good. It's all year round, like, crazy extravaganza. I hate decorating, and the only reason it happens is because I have children. Exactly. Well, I'm debating about decorating this year just because Here's Ollie funny. the land shark. Oh, the land shark might eat it all. Yeah. We're buying a new Christmas tree because Target had a big sale. <laughs> <laughs> so fun story about the Christmas tree. So Michael and I, our old house had like 10 foot ceilings. No, they were nine foot ceilings. So we bought a nine foot Christmas tree and it fit perfectly in our house. And then we moved. We have an eight foot ceilings. So we had to chop a, we chopped a full foot off the top of our tree instead of buying a new one. Why didn't you chop it off the bottom? Because I was not in charge of the chopping. Okay. Leah, so, sometimes I worried you're a little bit of the clampets over there. I mean, it. it's true. There's some clampet life going on. <laughs> but hey. The tree is like 10 years old because I have proof that I was pregnant with my youngest who will be 10 this year. And I was giantly pregnant decorating that tree. So I figure 10 years were due for a new one. Yeah. And it was 50% off. So there you go. There we go. There we go. Um. Okay. So this week we are going to talk all about holiday romances and help deck your TBRs full of holiday reads you're welcome did you like that Mm -hmm. um before we get into this we do need to explain the die hard test because we might have some new listeners that have zero clue what we're talking about and i am absolutely 100 percent positive that we will talk about those romances that hold up to the die hard test Mm -hmm. so die hard Mm -hmm. test is there are lots of people that say Die Hard is not a Christmas movie, and there's lots of people that say Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Correct. I mean, there is one correct answer to that question. Okay. Is and Die Hard a Christmas movie? And the rest of you are psychos. The Just theory saying. is, so the way we apply this theory to our books is, does Christmas or the holidays play an integral part to the story? Or could this story take place... Just in winter or any time or, of year. Or like if you just input a different holiday, would it work? Yeah. 
Um, how important is Christmas to this actual book? Um, so that is that is kind of where we're at with the Die Hard test. And if you want some other books that we hold like deep into the Die Hard test, we do have old episodes you can go back and listen to. We have a bunch of old holiday quick shots from the last two years. And then we also have our Christmas in July episodes where we rip apart books and if they pass the Die Hard test. And I yell at Becky. And she yells at me a lot. Um, okay, so what are we looking for in a holiday romance? Holiday. Holiday. Cheer. Okay, but is that it? Like, so I'm going to be honest. Part of the reason I like the holiday romances, the novellas particularly, mm -hmm. is they're short and they're spicy and they hold my attention when I have five million things going on. Yeah, that's that's valid. You Because you can read it between, I don't know, school programs or whatever. Or yeah. other school programs. <laughs> Or at the school program. Yeah. How discreet is your earbud? <laughs> I will say, like, holiday books, I am more drawn to a novella than a full-length book, though. I don't always love a full-length holiday story. I will say the caveat for me on that one is Winterville. I found Winterville last Christmas, and those are full-length novels, and I went to live in Winterville. But isn't Winterville, like, Christmas every day? Yes. So, yeah. I mean, that's like a different. It's a dynamic whole Christmas to... town. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a different dynamic to it. Um, what, do you, Jenny? If I say, okay, this is a holiday romance, what are you kind of looking for? What are you expecting? Um, yeah, I want it to pass the Die Hard test. Like, there needs to be a good reason why it's Christmas time, and I like the Grump like Grinch Scrooge character versus like somebody who is all about Christmas and like finding that balance. And I also like that um, a lot of authors will do like novellas of our favorite characters. So we mm -hmm. kind of get those like future glimpses of like the perfect little family on Christmas, which is not reality, but it's fun to pretend. <laughs> It is. And actually, Heather and I just did a quick shot of um, Four Pucking Christmases by Emma Fox, which is the Why Choose rom-com that they're writing together right now. And it was great. They have to go to four Christmases and they're doing it via an RV. That sounds like a special That's, kind of hell. Yeah. But it was so funny. And it... But it wasn't so much a glimpse into the future. It was kind of like a placeholder as to them navigating this relationship while we wait for the other two books. Okay. But I liked that. I it, it just was just what I needed to kind of remember why I love those characters and anticipate that January release. Yeah, I like sometimes, though, like when the Christmas story is the like that beginner novella. So it's like we meet them around like a holiday and then like like you know more is coming which we all know i hate a cliffhanger but in those types of novellas it's, it's always like a big event that like add like breaks it off typically and so it's like it's like the third act breakup phase one yeah so we just i just did that with naughty and nice by mary carr yes and that is next well maybe not next but soon to be because becky and i are going to do a quick shot on it it's so, so. fucking spicy so spicy so wait for titillating your ears <laughs> on that dis business so one of the things i do struggle a little bit with with the christmas novellas is um the uh multi-author world novellas mm -hmm. sometimes so i think it takes a very talented author to write a novella yes and oftentimes in these Christmas books, they'll be like, oh, I typically write 400 page books, but I'm going to write a 122 page little novella. Yeah, no. That's not. And particularly, and I mean, I'm going to poke and I'm going to poke here, guys. Particularly if you are a bottom of a mid list or a back catalog author who doesn't really necessarily have a huge grasp on your own regular length books, don't write fucking novellas. Because you can't. And you just look bad. Although, 
I will say that every once in a while, you'll come across an author who cannot handle a full length book, but they excel in the novella. Yeah. Um, who is the one that has, I think, excels at novella? She wrote a couple of um, full length books. She has a Sonoma series. May Harden. May Harden. She writes a dynamic novella. She does. She does a great job at novellas. If she writes the novella, I'll read it. Um, but there are others that she's been in multi-world books with that typically write full-length novels mm -hmm. and they don't have any business writing a novella. Nope. And I think that's where like the kind of revisiting characters works for some authors better because they don't have to build up like mm -hmm. who these people are or where they're at. Like we, if we're reading that, we've most likely read their other work and we are familiar with uh, like people and places and they can just kind of drop is, a quick story which is true if you aren't you know if you've already built a world because who did that carrie and ryan does that and i actually love when she does these because she'll drop like a little christmas novella although i guess they're her shorts that are in her patreon mm -hmm. i'm gobbling those up because they're just perfect but they're only like five thousand words if that sometimes like they're short like things <laughs> that you just you can't hand like you can't handle not reading. they're just they're so easy i think is what it is they're just easy i will say a lot of times you'll come across like a christmas anthology where full-length authors will oftentimes write novellas for those but a lot of times those are like the first snippet into a new book so they like really leave you hanging which kind of bugs me because then it's like oh man now i gotta wait for a full book but there's quite a few um there's quite a few authors in anthologies right now that are free mm -hmm. for the grabbing that are launching new series in those anthologies mm -hmm. i just downloaded the hockey one where yeah, there's a lot in that one too okay mary carr <laughs> Is she in that one? She launches her hockey series in that one. The one Please, from that. Please. You remember that hockey novella that yes. we read? He's the coach. <gasps> Yay. Yeah. So the book, well, the start of book one is wasn't in, that. in her Italian Stallion series. Isn't the one he hero a hockey player? Yeah, he is. It's because Alex made a cameo in that one, didn't yes. he? Yes. Yeah. That's uh, Lisa's uh, brother. All from... the worlds are coming together. All the worlds are coming together. Um, I also, I also like when we get some fantastical Christmases romances. Like I am thinking of last year. The highlight of my holiday reads was Sarah Bale's mm -hmm. books. <laughs> like they were so dirty. So they dirty. were so like. <laughs> magical and Christmassy fun. Like you could not read those without one, you know, having to fan yourself a couple of times, oh, but yeah. also like you were cheerful. Like at the end, you were, you were, but they're really short too, which it was nice, but it's like you, there wasn't a ton of plot in a couple of them, but there was like, there was a start and there was a finish and you believed it. Like, I mean, really, I mean, sexy and Saint Nick. Are you expecting a lot of plot in that? <laughs> did we need, but did we need the plot? I mean, <laughs> we all know I don't. I mean, and actually, so Chloe Maine, her wife for Christmas, which I didn't love, love it, but it was sexy but... enough that it got the job done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she's not always heavy on the plot either. <laughs> no, but she told us that we had, you know, because she, she it's a pen name for author zoe york and she shared with us that she likes to bang those out so she can bang it out <laughs> so i mean um and then our bestie 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 delta james is giving us a reindeer shifter this year for christmas no i'm really excited for that I can't wait. Miss Delta writes a great shifter, but I'm curious to like how she does the reindeer. Because does a reindeer not like her her wolves do? Like, is there nodding in reindeer? I I don't know. 
I feel is there like... something with the the antlers? Like, oh, I know. I'm sorry, Jenny. Yeah, <laughs> you guys should see Jenny's face right now. <laughs> it, it just is bringing back like door shifter. Jenny's the vacuum. having it's the vacuum. vacuum. The vacuum. I'm like scarred. It's PTSD. It is for the vacuum shifter. Can't vacuum my floors without. Becky's like I'm never taking one for the or Jenny's like I'm never <laughs> taking one for the team ever again. It's okay. I'm taking one for the team this time because I started today Monster Pucker. Oh yeah. Which is um, it's a hockey winter romance, um, and one of the heroes is a yeti. Oh, aren't they all different? She's Monsters? human. Well, I need that part. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so, Claus is a famous Krampus, and one of the biggest players in the league. He's gruff and hot, with a teddy bear heart hidden underneath. And Frank, the flurry Murray, is an up and coming Yeti who dreams big and loves hard. It's not the only thing that's hard. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm there for you guys. I don't think that's taking one for the team. I think that you are enjoying that one. I, I cannot tell you how much. I think there's a difference though. Like this has gotten way off track, but when something shifts into another like being or an inanimate object. This is true. And this is true. Although I did read the door shifter. So I did. Maybe you read the turkey, like, Thanksgiving leftovers, too. I did. The fever dream of Thanksgiving. So, so okay, here's a question for you guys. Does it bother you? So, like, K.A. Lindy has one that really is reminiscent of, it, like, the ballet. The Nutcracker plays pieces in the background. She's a ballet dancer. Um, He's a soccer player. Do you like when there are those pop culture Christmas type references or things like a Christmas story are mentioned? Uh, the Layla Hagen Christmas one, it has like lots of Miracle on 34th Street kind of vibes to it. Do you like those? Those don't always bother me because you figure the Nutcracker is ancient. Right. Miracle on 34th Street is super old. Like, it's one of those things where it's not new culture. Like, yes, it's essentially pop culture, but they've been around for years and years and years. So it's like, it's a 70-year-old reading this this romance gets it. I mean, the 20-year-olds might not get it, like for thir Miracle on 34th Street, but they've had multiple renditions of that movie also. So those types of things don't bother me, but it's like the newer things that are kind of like a, a one-off, one-hit type of thing that you're not necessarily is going to go the test of time does bug me. What about you, Jenny? What are your thoughts when we're seeing the cultural references of Christmas, <clears throat> not necessarily the religious references, but the you know because for the clarification <laughs> i don't need jesus joseph and mary other than when sister is coming she can call <laughs> all the people god jesus joseph mary the shepherds all the people can be there and sing gloria and sing all the <laughs> alleluias um but <laughs> i'm not talking about that like no okay. way in the manger <laughs> anyway <laughs> Similar to Leah, like, I think there are, like, those things that are, synonymous. like, you know, they're Christmas, like the Nutcracker, like, nobody's watching the Nutcracker in the middle of May, like, I mean, somebody probably is. But, um, I was gonna say, you know, there's yeah, one person. There's somebody, but, yeah, like, the things, like, It's a Wonderful Life, like, that's my favorite movie ever, but, like, for me, that means Christmas. Mm -hmm. But you figure, when was that movie made? Like, how old is that movie? So it's like generations know that movie. It's not new to a lot of people. So so when a lot of ro holiday romances are It's a Wonderful Life retelling or this, uh, um, A Christmas Carol retelling, those don't bother you? If they're those done right. Me. I don't mind them. I get a little bored sometimes just because I think that there's more to Christmas than New York City and 
the overworked heroine leaving the city and going to the mountains and meeting a lumberjack. Like, I think there's <laughs> more to Christmas than that. And well, sometimes and I, that's what I feel like we get. But I really like the authors that take those traditional stories and put their own twist on it. Like the Sarah Bale, like dirty sexting ones. Yeah. Like she took these like traditional characters and gave them her own spin. Well, not your average vixen by Krista Sandor. Like mm-hmm. one outs- of my all time favorite books. Outside of like Sarah Bale, which I loved those books. If you had to ask me right now, what is your favorite holiday romance read? It is going to be Not Your Average Vixen by Krista Sandor. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because one, it's chaotic and it's hilarious. Also, Heather and I were talking. Do you read her newsletters, by the way? This is so off topic. No, actually, <laughs> I messaged her today and I was like, because I had to ask for something. It was like, also, second thing, I love your new like newsletter format. It is like Krista chaos in the best form. Like, and <laughs> she said she like was is really excited to give people like a look into like her and not just push bookish things on people i do wonder though like sister it's not dear diary <laughs> every once in a while <laughs> right, I'm like, but i love it it's so chaotic if you do not sign up for her newsletter you a thousand percent you, but you be. will get recipes you will get family stories you will get the the saga of the refrigerator the refrigerator that is happening right now her husband is not allowed to go on trips again because <laughs> things break and then she freaks out. <laughs> right. Anyway, yeah. Not Your Average Vixen would a thousand percent be my favorite Christmas read. And it by far passes the Die Hard test. Oh, it does. Well, and I would say that's she does a really good job of like she has the Christmas references to things in there. But if you don't know them, it's not going to make a difference because they're I mean, like people's names. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like she is the vixen. Be the vixen and Christopher Rudolph Trigger. There's another name in there, but I can never remember his full name when I'm saying it. Um, okay, one of the other things, and I find this to be chaotic and I don't necessarily love it, is that a lot of releases from Thanksgiving until the end of the year are live releases. So we know they're coming or all of a sudden, there's just a new book out that everybody's yep, talking it's about. Like, hey, this is my secret project. <laughs> and we're all like, what the fuck? We didn't even know this was coming. We are well, planners. Like, I at least for the podcast. For this. <laughs> but I will say a couple authors that I know that do that, like, they have this idea that they're going to do, but they don't know if they're going to have time to finish it. Well, right. So that's... So that's the the theory behind the the live release. But then there's also an author who I've been sitting on a secret since July. Maybe even earlier than July. And she's got a live release that's happening in December. Now, it's not holiday related, but I've been sitting on it for friggin' months. Well, I mean, we don't care because you're mean and don't like to share. <laughs> Whether you're legally obligated or not. I'm sorry. Hmm. Sorry. So I'm fairly certain bad her CEO you. of everything will not, stab me. We do not feel bad for you. And she and lives CEO, within stabbing distance. Yeah, she does. But also, we don't feel bad for you. Okay, that's fine. Just, just, just saying. <clears throat> okay. Um, before we get into <laughs> books, we think you should add to your TBR because we are all over the freaking place tonight. We are. Um, I want to let everyone know that we have a new event this year happening over in Discord. It is called 12 Days of Merry Madness. And where I live and where I went to college, there used to be a street festival called East Merry Madness and Fraser Frenzy. And it was a big giant kegger street party that happened every May on the street that I lived on. Um, anyway, I was like having, (laughs) my boy child was like, are you having LSD flashbacks? I am not. (laughs) But, um, I was like, I need something chaotic and a fun name for a holiday fun thing. And I came up with Merry Madness and it made me feel, you know, nostalgic for the chaos. Did you feel young again? It did make me feel young again. (laughs) Um, So for 12 days, from December 4th to December 15th, we will have a different author joining us at a specific time um, to talk about their holiday release. 
and there will be prizes given away and tons of fun. And then we have a special buzzing about romance um, giveaway that we'll be doing in those 12 days. I gathered signed paperbacks from the Heating Up the Holidays Barnes & Noble signing that we did um, the other day. And um, I have a book tote signed by all the authors that were there at that event and a couple of holiday books to gift to somebody. And we'll do that in Discord. So if you aren't part of our Discord, you can find links on our website and go over and join our Discord. Even if you've never used Discord, do not worry. There are plenty of people over there that will help you navigate that world. Um, Honestly, but, Becky and I don't know what we're doing half the time anyway. No, we, so. Jenny and Hannah. I just, mm -hmm. Jenny and Hannah. Yep. Um, okay, so authors that will be joining us for the 12 Days of Merry Madness are Alexis Buxton. We met her at HEA. She was not a signing author. She just came to our table, and she was mm -hmm. adorable. Uh, Kelly Jamison will be over there. Marie Johnston. Kelly Reynolds um, from Boobies and Newbies and her latest book. She'll be there. Victoria Wilder will be there. Carrie Elks. Leonore Solis. Uh, Nicole Green. Uh, Kelly Kay, Erica Kelly, Delta James, and Calla Riley will all be there as a part of that well, event. And Calla Riley said Calla and Riley both might be there. No, they're both going to be there. They are both. They are both going to be there. I, I knew it was still up in the air if they were both um, And who the Buzzing About Romance co-host will be, we do not know. But somebody from Buzzing <laughs> About Romance that. will be there. Well, remind me to tell you about Lynn coming home for two weeks. Okay um okay so let's talk about our christmas tbrs um i have mostly new releases i know that many that leah and jenny just kind of went um mine are all a little over bit the of place mix. jenny yeah. would you like to tell everybody why google thinks you have a santa fetish yes because this <laughs> is a, a good, good story, story. I, I seriously spent probably Oh my, uh, it's embarrassing like four hours trying to find this book that was like stuck in my brain um he is her boss he has to dress up at San as santa and she like is the only one that fits in the old costume i could remember that part i could remember they got locked in a storage closet overnight at the department <laughs> store that he's like in charge of is that where they blink the first time I don't think they go all the way mm. in the storage closet. Just some dry um, humping, perhaps. Obviously, I could not remember this book, like, clearly. So, <laughs> um, and then I could remember that he proposed, like, on a holiday float as Santa. So, I spent, like, four hours, like, romance book, Santa proposes. And Google's like, actually, like, after, like, the probably, like, 12th iteration of, like, different parts that I remember putting it into Google, Google was finally like, do you need to remember the title of a book? Here are ways to do that. Shelves. Shelves. This is why it's important. This yes, is why market is red. This is why past Jenny. You need a holiday shelf so that you yes, can put all I the do. Santa books on the holiday you know, shelf people like also need to use different covers like don't use a stock photo guys i mean we understand <laughs> the need for the stock photo but it does make things harder wow jenny's sometimes. like getting <laughs> judgy like it's not even well, like I'll well it's because she spent hours searching for this because you should also not title your christmas book all i want for christmas it's been done it's by and at then least some. at least 40 people <laughs> what's funny though is jenny texted our group chat and gave us this description <laughs> and we're all like throwing out these ideas and she's like nope 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 Checked it. <laughs> we're like damn it but then by the end of this we're like we really need this book because we all want to read it <laughs> but alas she did figure it out i did find it finally i think now, i did just did you I, find it or did somebody tell you? I, I found it. I was like on page six of like, I think I top, typed in like Christmas boss and then pressed like the Kindle like filter. And I was like on page six. There's probably like 30,000 books. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's some dedication. This is how dedicated to Jenny know that title. is to the listener. She needed them to have this book. 
And she's going to share it with you because everybody has to read this <laughs> yeah, book now. now everybody's like, are you going to tell us? Um, it is Bad Boy Bachelor Claude by Weston and Allie Parker. And they're a brother and sister duo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No joke. I saw that book earlier, like when I was working on my holiday TBR for this episode, I was like, hmm, that sounds and, intriguing, but I did not like, it did and not And their click. cover is like, not exactly like others, but, um, the like candy cane stockings, like mm -hmm. our frequent cover option. Yeah. Fair. Okay. Uh, Lisa or Lisa. Who? <laughs> Wow. You're thinking, you are channeling the CEO of everything right there. I am. <laughs> well, no, I was thinking of Naughty and Nice because I just saw that on my list and I read that book. Uh, Leah, what is some books on your list for Christmas reads? Okay, so um, I love this book. It fits really well into the Christmas season, but his Tis the Season for Rebe Revenge by Morgan Elizabeth such a good story if you haven't read this it came out last year i think lynn did Lindsay and i do a quick shot for it such a like a really dynamic story a really good like you should just read it did you she read gets... big nick energy yet her new no, one i haven't i haven't read that one it is actually on my list also but i was gonna say that one later i'm sorry it's okay you can have it um but no i haven't because i just want to talk about the one that I had read already and it is delightful and such a good story and I just love the main character so much I think Wait, Lindsay still Nick drinks energy, maybe I did big Nick energy Morgan Elizabeth hold on let me look okay Jenny what else do you have over there um the three king series by Penny Reed mm -hmm. which she has homecoming king and drama king are both out now and then prom kings do next December um and they're a group of three guys that were like friends in high school and had all become celebrities in some way. And, but they're still like confidants and they're completely different from each other. Um, so I am super excited. I read that Veronica Eden um, book iced out that I was you know, I don't love college romance. I struggle with it because, you know, my children's age. Um, but I really liked that book. I think it's way better than The Deal by L. Kennedy. But she has a book, a holiday book coming out in that series called Matching All the Way. Mm -hmm. They meet on Tinder. And well, it's, like, it's like the Kelsey's. Anyway, meet on Tinder. I'm here for it. I can't wait. It doesn't come out until December. The title. Well, it doesn't come out to December and she's like, she's like not giving a date because she's not sure. But sister, give me the damn book already. <laughs> Don't be a hussy. Anyway, I put it on my TBR because um, going through all those pages. I'm like, you found oh. a lot of books. Yeah. So I was like, I don't think I've read this one, but apparently but I, I like this premise. <laughs> I love that title, though. Like it has like the like the tinder aspect but also like the holiday aspect to it well she wrote some novellas that was a terrible um <laughs> she wrote some novellas last year with Marin moore mm -hmm. called the jingle wars okay and i put that on my tbr <laughs> jenny do you just want to tell us about your amazon search <laughs> well now i'm like oh i definitely did not put those on a separate shelf <laughs> Oh, see, past Jenny, even just a couple hours ago. <laughs> yep. uh, what else do you got, Leah? Um, okay, so Melissa Williams has a six-book series. Three books were came out last year, and she's doing the next three this year. Um, but it's good. The series is All My Jingle Ladies, but it's like a bell choir. And it's like the story of the members of the bell choir, and there's like different tropes. They're short. They're... It's one of those ones where there's really enjoyable, but I mean, how many people have a bell choir? I mean, um, what is Becky's well, camera doing? I don't know. <laughs> you guys, it's like, catching up. It's <laughs> catching up, I guess. Um, <laughs> make me, or no, I'm sorry. I read Mary Pucking Christmas by Kelly Jameson, which 
small town girl goes to New York City for the whole New York City holiday extravaganza, mm-hmm. like ice skating in Central Park or Rockefeller Center, the tree, the windows. It was really cute with some fun of hockey. Um, and, you know, Kelly Jameson writes it. I read it. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, what else do you got, Jenny? Um, <clears throat> I think we've, like, recommended this one to Becky multiple times, and she still hasn't read it. So, A Very Bossy Christmas by Kaylee Loring. No, I did read that one. I did. Okay. Hey. I did. I did, did love you? it. You know what? And this, a- is, this is very interesting because Vi Keelan and Penelope Ward always put out an audio play. And... Um, at Christmas time, and then later on we'll get the ebook, but it always comes out in audio first. And we all know I'm a Vikeelan stan, right? Like I mm-hmm. love it. I don't like those either. Hmm. So, but anyway, I'm a bitch. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had our moments tonight. <laughs> we have. It's true. <laughs> Um, I actually, so LB Dunbar wrote one last year and, um, she has another one in that same world called naughty ish coming out. And I love LB because she writes mature Mm -hmm. characters, but I have to whine it's Stella Hunter and, um, and Teddy Hamilton again. Mm -hmm. And I do not like them together. It makes me grumpy. (laughs) So I'll read the ebook when it comes out. We well, got at least Leah. you still have that. Um, <laughs> Shopping for Love by Jessica Marin. It actually was free not too long ago. I believe it came out last year. But so the heroine works and is the personal shopper of the owner of the department store. And he comes in and he sees her and he is like, she is mine. Okay. Uber possessive. He take basically there is consent, but he does not take no for an answer. <laughs> Leah gives up consent for the holidays. He there's consent when it comes to like the things, just not the relationship. (laughs) It's a delightful. That's a gray area. It's red flags in my romance books are very different than the red flags in my real life people. Um, okay, what do you got, uh Jenny? Um, Melanie Moreland does her Insta Spark series, mm-hmm. and she usually puts a Christmas one out. And that so far, she has Christmas sugar and an unexpected gift, and then the wish list is dropping the first of December. But she is one of the few people I can trust with like those instant connections. She can somehow make me believe it because I struggle there. That's fair. Um, I'm really excited, Alexa. Or wait, what was my God? Alexis Buxton. Her book is called The Christmas Scramble. It's a hockey team, but a golf outing. So she has one holiday season, 12 chances to get her fling turned roommate to fall in love with the Christmas spirit and her. So I'm I'm interested to see what happens here. But it's only 153 pages, so as long as there's spice. I'll be fine. That sounds fun, though. Hockey players in a scramble. Sounds yeah, and like hockey... chaos. Well, sounds lots like of hockey players involved. play golf. Like, it's, I mean, did you not it... watch Billy Madison? <laughs> well, and it's a scramble, so I'm sure there's a reason for the scramble. So, okay, funny thing. Because golf scrambles aren't like your typical golf game either. So. That's true. Um, So, Marin Moore, I have struggled in the past with her hockey books. We all know mm-hmm. this, right? Yes. I read The Mistletoe Bet, which is a small town. Did you read it? No, it's on my list. Oh, it's on your list, too. So it's the big city girl who, like, (laughs) left the small town as soon as she graduated college, moved to New York, has the job, but kind of unhappy. Unresolved issues with her parents, comes back for the holidays at her mom's insistence, and it's her brother's best friend, and he's the town doctor, it's adorable and sweet, but also really great spice. Like, and lots of sex under the Christmas tree. And he lives in a log cabin. Like, it could not be more Christmas. 
But that's one of those ones where you don't love the full length book, but you like the novella. She did a really great job with it. And I'm really interested. She has a festive feud, which is book two in the same small town. And I'm curious to see. Is it going to be a novella too? Or do you? It's a, I think it's longer. But novella ish. Yeah. I think it's under 200 pages. Okay. Leah, what do you got? Um, I have Make Me Marry by Marie Johnston. So this is Age Gap, um, Boss's Daughter. It is Nora Barron, and she is coming home, and nobody knows she's coming home. And when she walks into her parents' house, the man that she has been lusting over for years walks out of the bathroom in his birthday suit. And she sees it all, and she is intrigued. Because she has liked him for a long time. And it just, it goes uphill from there. And it's delightful. And I just love this whole series and the family. And Clay is, I think I think it's Clay. Now I'm like, I got a lot of characters in my head right now. Colt, I knew it was a C. Colt has a lot of misguided thoughts on like why he shouldn't pursue things because she's older he works for her parents blah 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 he's delightful he has some secrets we learned them all it's very good though you don't have to read the other series like the books in the series for this one though so if you want the holiday book just jump right in with this one okay uh jenny what do you got um one of the anthologies um that's free right now is wrap me up holiday anthology and it Mm -hmm. um that's one of those books where like i think most of the authors have like it's kind of like the teaser to the bigger story Mm -hmm. um penny reed lh causeway samara sierra simone apparently i cannot talk any longer katherine cows um deborah anastasia and i think there's like three or four others Mm -hmm. yeah those are pretty good blend of authors on that one Um, and i know some of those stories you can pick up elsewhere too it's not only there but free right now on amazon which is nice i mean i think those are nice Mm -hmm. um okay i actually really like those types of anthologies because i will find authors that i haven't read before and you get like a little bit into their style of writing you're like oh i might like this author so then like you try like an actual book and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't it's a nice especially with it being free it's a nice introduction enough and it's a low risk entry right mm-hmm. right like and yeah. they know that they have to write it in a way that it's going to grab attention so you either come back and find other books by them or you stick around for that book so again as a reader there's a lot of less there's not as much risk mm-hmm. so uh anyway what do you got leah anything else um of course i have a bunch um so waiting for christmas by cynthia eden she typically does a um, holiday book every year this is her new one that just came out it is a sibling's best friend she is older but only by like a year so there's no age gap and they both have been in love with each other for years but both of them are dumbasses and haven't said anything but so she comes home somebody's after her typical Cynthia Eden style but it's a novella it's delightful it is dirty there's lots of lots of kissing under the mistletoe that's where their first kiss is it's delightful um I picked up a trick shot by Kayla Gross it's uh male male female and um Heather read it and she said Thank you for me uh, suggesting it. So (laughs) anyway, um, I also picked (laughs) up, I think Vera Valentine has one. The stockings were hung. I know stockings. I know Merit has read it. Oh, Merit likes the weird ones. I have. Thank you, um, Merit. Hold on a second. I got to find it. They... The stockings were hung. Yep, that's what it's called. I have not read it yet, but I know that Merritt did. So she's always willing to read the weird ones too. It's on my TBR. I I don't know if they're stocking shifters. Um, I don't know, but it's Vera Valentine, <laughs> so it's gonna be a ride. 
I mean, she wrote a door. It's going to be all right. And a balloon animal. You never know what you're going to get. Right? Oh, here it is. Um, Because I had to look it up. The stockings were hung. A heartwarming story by J.L. Logus and Vera Valentine. It's part of the... Um, it's in the same grouping as Back for Seconds, a reverse harem feast, which was the. Oh, there's a whole collaboration. Yes. Interesting. So I it's mean, a why choose male, 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 female story. I so, wonder if the stockings cross. Well, it's male, 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 female. Yes. So, I mean, you guys. I'm going to have to read that one, I think. I. Just wish you could see this <laughs> cover. Oh my. <clears throat> I mean, anyway. But you don't like a white shoes. I trust Vera Valentine because I read she the balloon is. animal Omegaverse. This is true. So. <laughs> so it's never a hard no. She, she, uh, yeah, she can suspend belief. For her small Honestly, I'm reading the one. I'm reading the one by Emma Fox, which is a I white shoes, and there are that's no the swords thing. crossing. That's the thing. Like as like we read more, like I used to have some hard nose. I don't really have a hard anything anymore. Like apparently, Jenny's <laughs> stopgap is the uh, vacuum. That is, you have I to fully finish. shift. You have to fully shift. You can't be half yes. shifting. You can't, and you, you can't, can't have a uniboo. Or suction arms. Hmm. The sound, the sound. Like, I cannot bag you up for. <laughs> That's why you have a husband. Oh, good God. Okay. Uh, we are off track again. <laughs> Does anyone have any other books they absolutely think should be on someone's Christmas TBR? Just list them now. Um, there's oh. a scent. No, there's a Santa Daddy collaboration series coming out in December. Yeah, it's Cassie Mint, Myra Stratham. Is Chloe mm. Main in that one? Mm, let me check. I mean, Tori I'll call Pate. Santa Daddy. Tori. <laughs> I think Tori is in that one. I mean. What about you, Jenny? Is there any uh-huh. others that you... I was going to bring up that, like, I think it was, yeah, 2020, Netflix did, like, a few of the, not Netflix, Passion Flicks did a few of the, like, novellas um, and made them into, like, little short 20-minute videos, which was, I mean, the quality is not top tier, but it's kind of nice to see something you read on the screen. I think they did one of the V. Keelan Penelope Ward ones. Yeah, they did two of theirs. Yeah. Um, the Merry Mistake and Sexy Scrooge. Okay, Scrooge is not sexy. I mean, he could be. Mm. Do you, if he's, he's not he, old. He could be a daddy. Could I you mean, imagine if, if he looks somebody like put Wander? That's what I was going to say. Saying, like, yeah. if somebody put Wander and said, This is Scrooge, you'd be like, I'm going to read that. So it's not really Christmas, but I today was thinking about, and I think we had to do an episode about this, of books that we like can't, that live rent free in our brain, because I was thinking about Sexy Odin from Sarah (laughs) Bales, and I was like, yeah. Merritt bought his calendar. Did she really? Yep. She's like, I couldn't help myself. She's like, where where should I hang it now? (laughs) Above your bed. Like, on the ceiling. (laughs) I, she did not tell her husband i don't think because <laughs> that's like international like, it is it is but it just made me love her even more that I mean, she was she's like dedicated she's like, she had no chill she was so excited she she's like shared all the pictures oh my goodness as she was what well, was a video she's like talking um chloe main is not in the santa daddy okay. collaboration is tori baker lonnie Ree, cassie mint Myra Stratham, Violet Ray, and Nicole Rose and Lonnie Ree like co-write sometimes and they go under Lonnie Nicole, but they're all daddies. So it should be fun. I mean, I like a daddy. I like a daddy too. <clears throat> Santa daddy. Um, okay. Anything else, Leah? Any other books that should be on someone's TBR? I mean, I have a bunch, but I can just make a, I'll just make a post, a blog just post. Just make a post. It. Okay. 
Um, like I said, make sure you join us over on Discord for um, 12 Days of Merry Madness starting December 4th. Um, okay, so guys, it's that time. It's that time for Book, Book of, of the, the Week. week. It's Book of the Week. Uh, Jenny, what's your Book of the Week? Uh, Rush by Emma Scott. Have you guys read this one? Mm-mm. It's a little. I don't it's think a I've little, ever read Emma Scott. Okay, it's a little older. Like the blurb caught my attention. Um, he is a former like extreme sports journalist. Um, participated in the extreme sports, photographed and wrote about them. Um, he had an accident and he is now blind. And she is a uh, like Juilliard trained violinist and. Um, like tragedy has kind of made her loss lose her music um and he she, she ends up being hired to help him like reacclimate to life um it's just a really good story of like growth and like learning how to live with whatever you've been dealt okay um leah what's your book of the week okay my book of the week um so i been I've had a lot of work to do so I haven't been able to read like new books recently because work life has been super crazy so like I but so I've been diving back into Julianne Walker's backlist of her Black Knight's original series and um really just all of them but I really enjoyed Wild Ride um it just her stories are so dynamic they are interspersed and intermingled and you you have to read them in order because like you will miss a lot like in like if you read a late one before the earlier ones, but she just really writes a strong story and I just love her character development and just their backstories. Um, so my book of the week, I talked about it a little bit on here is Mistletoe Bet by Marin Moore. It is a small town uh, romance girl returns home from New York City. It really deals with that family dynamic of you know, I could relate to it. Doesn't really feel like she has a place with her mom or with her dad. Um, so she's just kind of avoided home and it's brother's best friend. She's a curvy heroine and the brother doesn't overreact. Like he questions it, but then later on he looks at her and says, don't fuck this up. Like (laughs) it's a good thing. You don't break his heart because he, the hero has been pining he falls first. Like it was absolute super squishy Hallmark spicy vibes. I like that. Um, I like when the, the sibling doesn't freak out though. He doesn't. He questions like, are you, you guys sure? sleeping together? Like, like, like really? what? <laughs> but boys are clueless and stupid. So it made sense. It worked. Um. Okay. Patreon update. We are so grateful to all of our patrons. Um, we could not bring you the episodes that we do without your support. Um, Swag Packs, sponsoring authors for November, are Cambria Herbert and Penny Reed and Aaron Nicholas. And um, they were pretty good swag packs this time. They were really good swag packs. There was like a vellum page insert from Penny Reed. Cambria had all the stickers. And Aaron had um, a great coaster, which... Ollie eight, so that was fun, um, and a fun magnet. But it was really good. It was really good swag this time. Mm-hmm. Um, swag packs go out to Fancy Drink, Cold Brew, and Queen Bee Tears, and we still have fun buzzing about romance exclusive stickers, uh, mood reading cards, and other fun things. This time we did the button and the coloring card that Leah made. We're in our mm-hmm. swag packs this time. They are mailed monthly on the 5th of the month, and we do ship these internationally. There is no wait time on this perk. It does kick in when you join. Um, but it they mail on the 10th of the month, so if you join after the 10th, your next one will be the following month. Uh, because of our amazing Patreons, we're able to bring you three episodes a week, and we are still working on our goal of 75 members so we can plan our first ever book retreat. All members of Patreon get exclusive episodes like Should You Read It's and Buzzing After Darks and perks like Book Club. Um, and you can find a list of all of our events at bookcaseandcoffee.com slash events, including happy hours, IG lives, and book clubs. 
And right now we are working on clearing our TBRs. So, and we are have we clearing Mondays. them though? I've There's been no clearing, clearing mine. How many have you been adding? We aren't, I don't have adding anymore. <laughs> Remember I deleted that on my Goodreads. Oh, that's true. We don't have TBRs. We just have <laughs> endless, endless lists of books. I just have lists of books I need to read for this or that or the ones that are monsters and shifters. And sometimes the ones that just live release and you're like, ooh, I'm going to read that. <laughs> I'm right. just going to read that random book on a Tuesday. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Leah and Jenny, thanks so much for hanging out and helping stack everyone's holiday TBR. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's right. <laughs> Until next time, everyone. Happy reading, everybody. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 